Hey, Matt, congratulations on making All Mountain West first team today. I uh, just want to get your reaction uh, to winning that award and then also winning Newcomer of the Year. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Um, it was a big accomplishment. You know, there's a lot of talented players in this uh, in this conference, um, ranging from, you know, all teams. So uh, to be recognized as, you know, first team and newcomer is uh, pretty special. But ultimately, you know, I'm happy, you know, for our team and how we progress throughout the season. So, uh, you know, although it's a nice individual accolade, I'm really focused on just uh, taking care of business in uh, the Mountain West tourney. And then, yeah, big week ahead in the Mountain West tourney. I'm wondering, has the coach said anything about the late night games that you're going to be playing and how the quick turnarounds for preparation will be like this week? Uh, no, not too much. We haven't really been uh, discussing, you know, the games. And we know it's going to be three back-to-back. Um, but ultimately, I think, you know, uh, coach has no excuses. I think Josh said it in an interview. And our coach, uh, Coach Dutch, has been kind of, you know, telling us that day in and day out, no excuses. We just got to lock in and – uh, we got to win these games. So, And then final one for me, I asked the same question, Nate. I wonder if you have a different answer. Uh, in a hypothetical situation, uh, the defense has come through clutch the last two games. Um, I'm wondering in this, in this week ahead, hypothetically with the game on the line, would you rather be on the offense or defense? Um, you know, our offense has improved steadily throughout the season. But, you know, one thing that's not in question is how we defend. Uh, we feel really comfortable on the defense and, you know, only up by one point both games and we know we can get the stop. So, uh, you know, I, I'll answer probably with defense, but, you know, uh, offense isn't too far behind. So they had the same answer. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Hey, so Austin, we'll go to Lee. Hey, uh, Matt, thanks for doing this. Uh, the droughts that San Diego State has had on offense, I mean, they've been pretty significant in chunks of time and, and pretty significant games. Any explanation, and do you feel just the enormous pressure on your shoulders when nobody else can drop it in the hole that you got to make something happen? Um, no. Uh, yeah, you know, our offense has definitely struggled at times. Um, a lot of it, which I think we improved on, was just the turnover piece. Um, you know, we did kind of show, you know, go back to ourselves, like how we were in November against uh, Nevada as far as turning the ball over. But Ultimately, we've improved on not, you know, having, you know, self-inflicted turnovers. And I think guys are starting to get comfortable. Trey, Chad, you know, Lamont, um, Nate Mensa, everybody really, you know, Josh. So um, I'm, I'm feeling the help and I'm feeling, you know, not that much pressure on myself. So uh, I'm going to just continue to, you know, play my game, facilitate when I can and, you know, hopefully pull out the win. Defensively, uh, that, that's what San Diego State's hung its, its reputation on. Can you see in the eyes of the other team when they're starting to get overwhelmed with the level of defense, the length of defense, the physicality of your defense? you get a sense that somebody else's game is coming apart because of you guys? Um, yeah, you know, I think our, our coach says, Coach Dave says it the best, like, you know, we're the best at fixing things. You know, once, you know, one of our players get broken down and, you know, somebody has a free lane to the rim, somebody else steps up. And if they kick it out, we get out there. So we don't give up no easy buckets. We, uh, the team has to really work for it. And, then, uh, you know, the last couple minutes of the game, when the game's on the line, we're for sure, you know, locked in. So, yeah, our defense is something to go against. I've been going against it, you know, every day in practice, and it's, it's really tough for me. And I think that's why I'm playing the way I am right now uh, when it comes to games, you know, going against other defenses. So... Yeah, our defense is definitely a struggle for all teams. Uh, does it take a special psyche for a player to come into this program and play this type of defense? Uh, yes. Um, you know, it was a big struggle with me, uh, you know, coming in. I wouldn't, you know, but the thing about it, I think I got so much better as a player because of it, uh, having to, you know, be responsible on the defensive end while also, you know, maintaining my offensive uh, threat. So, uh, you know, it definitely t takes a type of player to come in here, not just, you know, on the defense and offense end, but just as a high character person, uh, having to go through the struggles and, you know, figure it out and, you know, grow with other people and, you know, maintain your focus. So uh, I'm really proud of, you know, how my teammates and coaches pulled me along, you know, with the tradition here at San Diego State. So, yep. I don't think we've ever seen so many quality teams in a conference in any one given year. What? What do you think the tournament's going to be like, considering what's above you guys in the standings and what you've witnessed? Uh, I think it's going to be the best tournament going on in Vegas. Uh, you know, um, there's a lot of high-quality teams. I think every game is going to be a battle. You know, 
Uh, I think, you know, there's certain moments, you know, maybe in previous years where, you know, you go into a, a, a quarterfinal game knowing that you're going to pull it out. But, you know, we're going into every game, you know, knowing that we got to play at our best in order to win, especially against Fresno State. After that, you know, hopefully Colorado State and then, you know, whoever else is in the championship. So uh, every game is going to be a battle for us three days in a row. It's going to be must watch TV. So, yeah. Um, last question for me. Uh, when we talked back at the beginning of the season, we talked about Cal and where you came from and uh, the struggles and the experience. Uh, could you imagine that this thing would work out the way it did? 21 wins and the best defense in the country and a chance to go to the show? Um, no, nah, I, I didn't imagine it like this. You know, the I, I, biggest thing I imagined was, you know, definitely winning games and being closer to home. But, you know, I didn't imagine us being in a position, you know, make a name for ourselves. Uh, in, you know, not, in the, not only in the Mountain West tournament, but also, you know, in the national tournament. So um, I'm really proud, you know, to be an Aztec right now. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, the rest of the season and moving on forward with the next year and stuff. So thanks for the time. Great season. No, thank you. Thanks, Lee. We'll go to Troy. Hey, Matt. A um, couple of questions for you. First of all, uh, playing in Las Vegas, uh, SDSU, at least the fans consider Vegas their second home. And I, I know you don't have a whole lot of history with that, but is there something about Las Vegas that playing there, whether you're playing the Rebels or in the tournament, that maybe it brings out the best in this team? Um, you know, I, I, I've only experienced it once, um, you know, going to UNLV earlier in the year and the way we pulled out that win without, you know, Trey and Lamont. You know, our coach was telling us that, you know, when we compete in Vegas, you know, we're always a threat and, you know, Regardless of who's wearing a jersey, you know, San Diego State matters uh, in those moments. So I think, you know, going back to Vegas, we're pretty confident about the situation we're about to be put in. And, you know, regardless of who we play in the conference, uh, we're feeling good. And I think we're playing our best basketball right now. So, you know, regardless of the city or, you know, whatever, the, you know, situation is, I think we're going to be fine. You mentioned the possibility of playing three games in three days. The the way that your your schedule was so compacted due to COVID and rescheduling and stuff, did that prepare you for a run like this? Yeah, I think so. I think we just we just played uh, three games this past week, you know, and uh, although they weren't back to back to back, you know, sometimes those little days in betweens can do you know doesn't do much justice itself. So. Uh, this is something we've been experiencing for the past month or two, just, you know, having to play, you know, games left and right. So I think definitely going into the tournament, you know, and it just takes us back to high school days, you know, when we used to play AAU and, you know, you play six games in one day. Like, I think we're really looking forward to this moment to just compete uh, with each other, you know, for three days in a row and, and pull out all the wins, so. And obviously you don't know who you're going to play in your first game, either Fresno State or San Jose State, but focusing on Fresno State for the moment, I think, Coach Dutcher said it was going to be a fist fight one game, and then the next game he said it was going to be a rock fight. If you have to play Fresno State, what kind of fight do you think you'll see this time in the third time? Yeah, it's going to be an all-out brawl. Um, you know, I think they're really confident thinking that they can beat us. And I, I know we're confident, too, knowing that we should pull out the win. So, um, there, there's, there's, you know, there, it's going to be a battle for sure. And, I, you know, I wouldn't count out San Jose State, too. You know, they're, they got some good players over there, uh, maybe, you know, like I said, in, in in March, you never know who can win. So as much as we want to play Fresno, you know, we're looking forward to, you know, potentially playing San Jose State too because they got a pretty good team uh, regardless of their record. So, yeah, whatever whatever team it is, is going to be a grudge match. And then two more questions. Uh, first, yesterday the media didn't have any Aztecs on the first team, all conference team. And I know you, you, you started off by saying individual accolades. Uh, you were kind of focused more on the team win, but still – is there, is there a little motivation for this team to prove, like, or, or taking the underdog role and, and to prove something here in this tournament? Um, yeah, you know, I think we got a team full of underdogs, you know, dudes that have been counted out. Um, that's just the character of this team. Um, and, you know, regardless, you know, me personally, like I said, you know, uh, not getting the accolades and all that is fine. Uh, I didn't really come here for that, you know, specific reason. I knew uh, the situation I was being put into was more, you know, team-oriented. So, uh, but, you know, going into, you know, just not winning the conference, I think ha gave us a big chip. You know, we're third in the conference, and I think we all think we're the best, you know, in the conference. So we're going to go into the tournament and prove that. So, um, yeah, I think that, that alone just gives us the chip we need to push forward. And then finally, Matt, I, I didn't, haven't had a chance to ask you, but you obviously made your decision to come back 
already next year. Um, and maybe you've answered this question before, but if you don't mind, what was the, what was the factors that made you decide now to say, yes, I'm coming back next year? Um, you know, ultimately it just came down, you know, me being in college for four years and, you know, wanting to, you know, get something out of my academic uh, career in college. Um, you know, I gotta, I'm going to graduate next spring. And, you know, for me to leave early, I feel like would be doing myself a disservice. Um, so, you know, that was that was the number one thing. And then also, you know, being here in San Diego, it's been lovely. You know, I love the school. I love the environment. It's close to home. There's a lot of good things. You know, I'm not in a rush to leave. I think, you know, you only live once. So, uh, you know, once this part of my life is gone, there's no going back to it. So, you know, I'm going to write it out as long as I can. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, grateful to have the opportunity to just come back for one more year. Enjoying being a college student, are you? Uh, it's nice, yep. <laughs> right on, Matt. Thank you very much for your time. Best of luck this week. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Troy. We'll go to Brandon. Greetings. Uh, I'll, I'll put it like this, Hello. sir. You got me? Yep, I hear you. Good. I'll put it like this. I know you're going to say at some point, you know, you're above worrying about what the awards are and if you get them or not. But were you surprised by the amount of people who were essentially in an uprising over the fact that you weren't on the first team yesterday as compared to today? Did you see that coming? Um, no, I, I didn't really see that coming, you know. Um, I don't spend too much time on, you know, social media myself, but I did, you know, hear from family and friends uh, about, you know, there was a little uproar from, you know, San Diego State fans, you know. And I really appreciate that, you know, them having my, you know, uh, back, you know, on that, you know, accolade and all that. But um, what I wanted to say, you know, I think personally, you know, I recognize, you know, the, the guys on the first team are really good players. You know, I think uh, you have to respect that, you know, Maldonado, you know, whoever whoever was on that first team, even second team, you know, they some of them dudes may, may have deserved, you know, first team honor. So uh, just being, you know, in the list amongst those, you know, players is pretty special for me. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, we'll go to Mark. Um, Matt, in that same vein, you've seen every player in this league play, and you've seen them up close. Um, who do you think the player of the year is? Um, sure. I think the player of the year is Nate Mensa. That's what I think the player of the year. I think, you know, a dude like that, he, you know, he guarded, you know, the two, you know, EK. He guarded, uh, uh, you know, I can't think of his name, a Fresno State big man, um, and held him, you know. He's the reason why we won multiple games this year, all the games. And I think, you know, when you look at somebody's uh, – oh, my bad, sorry. I think uh, when you look at somebody's, you know, like level of play, you, you automatically focus on the offensive end. But, you know, what Nate's done for our team defensively has just been, you know, really big. And uh, I consider him, you know, the most valuable player on our team and the most valuable player on the conference. So uh, that's who I'd give it to. Um, take me back to the, the last few minutes of the uh, Nevada game. I mean, you guys are absolutely rolling in that game, playing maybe your best basketball of the season in the first 30 minutes. Um, and then, uh, you know, had a rough time there. How much of that was fatigue? How much of that was scheme? How much of that is fixable? Um, I think it's all fixable, you know. I think, uh, you know, especially myself, uh, when it came to, the, you know, the press and all that, you know, I kind of, you know, did some out-of-character, you know, mistakes. Um, I think we just lost focus a little bit and let them come back into the game. But, um yeah, and, you know, fatigue, you know, that was their third game in that week. Uh, and we, we battled it out, you know. Most importantly, we got the win. But, you know, being up 19 points, we definitely cut it too close. And I think we learned a lot from that game, you know, going into uh, the tournament that we can't, you know, do anything like that again in order to win. So, um, yeah, we learned a lot from it. Chad, Chad Baker Mazar was named sixth man of the year by the coaches. Um, are you surprised by that? And, and uh, you know, you know, what kind of choice is, is that? And, and, and what what did he bring off the bench that makes him uh, that caught the eye of all the coaches? Yeah, you know, Chad, I, I tell him all the time. I tell everybody I talk to. I think he, you know, when it comes to having pro-like, you know, skill, he fits the intangibles. You know, he's six seven, long, 
can score at three levels, you know, athletic, can shoot the ball really good. So, you know, I tell everybody, you know, I think Chad, he's going to, you know, make a lot of money one day playing this game. And um, not only that, but he's a great teammate. You know, there's games where he doesn't play as much as he thinks he should or as we think he should. And there's games that, you know, he really steps up for us. But ultimately, he doesn't let it affect him. You know, he's a great teammate. Um, he always encourages me, especially when I'm in my own head. So, you know, just from a, a skill piece, you know, he's top notch. And from a teammate piece, he's also top notch. So I think all around, you know, he, he deserves that award. And uh, it's, it's nice that he's getting a little recognition. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. We'll go to Darnay. Hey, Matt. Uh, Hello. Congrats on the word today. Um, you, you touched on it, but you guys have had kind of some some scoring slumps in a number of games here recently where there's kind of an extended stretch where uh, you guys have a, a tough time generating offense. What, from your perspective, is the cause for that, and what's it going to take to avoid those types of droughts now in the postseason? Uh, I think uh, the number one thing is trusting our coaches. You know, they tell us, they give us the key, you know, to every game as far as what to do. Uh, and sometimes we let fatigue or, you know, uh, just, you know, uh, not really focusing, you know, detach us from the game plan. But ultimately, you know, we play good enough defense to get out in transition, to get easy buckets. we got great athletes. So I think if we do that first, uh, we'll be fine, especially in moments of, like, you know, short slumps. And then also just, uh, you know, everybody feeling comfortable within their game. You know, Trey's starting to feel good. Everybody's starting to feel good, you know. Um, so if everybody, you know, knows their role, feels good in their game, it's going to help out a lot too. And I think those are two major factors to us, you know, having success on the offense end. And you talked about it a bit earlier. Um, you know, there's obviously been games where you've had to carry the offense, but there's been a stretch recently where you've scored a lower percentage and shooting percentages have gone up, overall scoring for the team has gone up. Like, how do you know within a game when it's time for you to really assert yourself and when it's time, when there are times when it would benefit the offense if it was a bit more balanced? Uh, you know, that's something I continue to try to figure out. Um, you know, definitely in the earlier part of the season, that's something I struggled with. Um, but I think, you know, although, you know, I get, I, I'm pretty, you know, the ball's in my hand a lot, but I ultimately don't need to shoot the ball every time. You know, I'll, I'll make the right play. I'll try to find somebody if, if it's necessary or when somebody's open. So, and then there's moments where, you know, I got to take a tough shot here and there. So I think just, you know, Knowing the flow of the game, understanding the game a little bit better, you know, continue to grow my game, watch film, uh, definitely help out with, you know, my decision making when it comes to that. But uh, I think that's something I've continued to get better at um, throughout the season for sure.